Hey guys, my name is Dan. Um, haven't put a video out in quite a while, so um, thought I'd put uh, something up. Um, right now, I'm working on a cover song uh, for Alan Parson Projects uh, Serious. And well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it through in bits and pieces. I'm gonna, so that the copyright doesn't hit me because I haven't bought the cover license yet, but um, I wanted to get a few more songs, you know, kind of together before I actually went and did that. And um, anyway, so I'll kind of just, this is kind of more for some of my family folk to, um, to show them what I'm doing, the process of this, but uh, I'll, it'll be up on YouTube. It's the easiest way for them to watch it anyways, but if you guys like it, uh, throw it a like and um, throw some advice in there. If you got it for, uh, for me, if you know what I'm trying to do and maybe ways to do it better or um anyway that so there's a place on online that you can get midi data from um let's see if i can there is a i i got the midi data it was just a check i'm not i'm actually um yeah it's uh you can go to bit midi um so i it, there's a few songs where they'll give you all the midi data well, it's not all the MIDI data, and it's not necessarily the final version of the MIDI data either. And there's no directions with it. It's just the name of what maybe it is. And I'm, I believe they're not going to give you any more than 16 channels worth, since there's only 16 MIDI channels. Um, it's pretty much limited at that, unless there's a, unless they got a part two file or a part three file or what have you. So, uh, anyways. So I got, so I, I had that and I, I kind of checked it with the, the MIDI data that I wrote from here in the song. Um, what you can do in FL Studio here, and as you could probably do in other software programs too, is you can take the song and you can actually slap it in here. Um, it helps to make sure you look up the, the BPM of the song, uh, what key it's in. Um, the time signature, just so that uh, it makes it easier to start everything off of. Because um, if you don't, if you get the BPM wrong, uh, it's going to be really hard to line things up. And even FL's beat um, decipher um, software isn't really that; good. it doesn't get it right. But so anyway, it just, you know, makes things easier. So what you could do is you could take the, the wave file and you can drag it straight into uh, FL anyway. Uh, and then you can, you just, here I can just isolate this track and the wave file will show up under audio. And I have a, I have a there's a couple copies here only because I, I, I kind of tweak some things just to get it how I wanted it. But anyway, so you play it, you'll hear the song. I'll, I'll kind of skip up so you can recognize it. So that, that's the song. Again, I'm not going to play because I don't want, I'm trying not to get this video copyrighted. So we'll see what happens though. Um, Anyway, so I I just put the song in there and you know that it's a short song, so it looks like it's like fifty you know, plus or minus fifty-seven measures. And anyways, so I've gotten to the point where I don't I don't really need it anymore. I'm just trying to um remake it and there's there's a couple of things I changed. I kind of lined things up in a you know, I kept everything on eight measure increments and stuff like that. Uh, there is still some timing play with things not being exactly on that because that's how it was in the original song. But I, I just kind of keeping it, but but I kind of slightly modernized it. it but it's just per just personal touch. Just so, um, what? So basically, um, what? What I went ahead and started to, as I worked off the bass first, the bass was actually, this is probably the hardest one to work on. So, and I ended up using Harmer. 
um, which is an additive synthesizer that I really don't know how to use that well. But anyways, it, it, it's actually quite, quite capable. Um, other YouTubers have made good videos um, on the use of it, such as Seamless R's channel. Anyways, so any, um, I kind of, what I did is I just found a preset that kind of sounded similar to the bass sound, and then I just started to kind of change some of the parameters so that it sounded a little bit more along the lines of what was in the original song. Not the original, pretty much I don't think I could do the original sound, but at least something that was kind of, sort of good. And anyway, this is what I came up with. So the this is the track. These are the basically these are all the notes for the bass line in the entire song, and uh, which actually additionally was confirmed by the 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 MIDI files that I uh, downloaded. And so you got this clip shows the MIDI uh, notes how long they are and if we go into it we have piano roll and i can zoom out show you the notes pretty much just a bass it's just bass sound basically it's filtered down i you know i i, I could spend a little more time uh, to try to get it similar to what those guys did um which i still might do uh, i mean this is this is mostly done but i i still got some play playing around to do um so if i play it um uh, i believe i got it yes start off so we, it's just got the and it's the yeah e e major is the key so it's it's just every most every note on anything is starting on b and then it, it shifts around from b to g to e uh, so if you've got um a subwoofer you'll you'll appreciate some of that um, if you're listening to this on smaller speakers, you're not going to really, it's not going to sound so good. But anyway, um, in the beginning, I think I got a little bit of automation on here. So I got a little bit of variance in sound and you get that with using unison. And so you get phasing that's happening. And so that's why there's a wave in the sound. If you want to change the frequency of that phase oscillation, then you can change the pitch uh, for your unison. So if I change the pitch a little bit, it'll change. Um, I think additionally with the bass, there's a um, parametric equalizer, got a high and a low pass filter on it. So I just um, mess around with that. Not, you know, nothing too spectacular, but just something. Um, I did, I do have a couple of other instruments layered with the bass, but it turns out that they're not really adding anything. We got this plug-in, uh, FL's Flex. It's like, it's okay, mostly. It doesn't do bad. It's better if you get a, you know, a dedicated um, VST for that instrument, but it, it does in a pinch. Um, I don't have a guitar VST, so I'm using it for the guitars that you'll hear. And it just happened to have um, 
Well, the thing that, uh, that Alan Parsons did is they incorporated a brass sound in that bass. But so I tried to see if I could add to that, but and it, you know, I'm not sure that uh, I'm skilled enough to make anything work. Um, anyway, so uh, and then up here, I've just had it. This is just a sine wave from a straight synthesizer, um, which you can actually make with Harmer, but you have to go and change stuff. Uh, if I remember right, you go, to, uh, man, I'm I'm just gonna get lost trying to explain this part but there is a yeah i'm just not going to worry about that right now i'm just getting off track here but anyways but you could do it but this thing is just so much more complicated that you have to like set it up to do simple sounds and it's just easier to use centrist because centrist just right off the bat does simple the simplest sound that there is which is the sine wave so there's that and then Pretty much it for the bass. There's nothing uh, too much more alongside what the what that is. There's a little bit of a crack in the sound when the the brass for that brass sound, but and I'm not I'm not I don't have it on. I, well, I'm not thinking to have it on because I don't want it phasing if it's phasing is a little bit off it's going to take away from the effect of the of harmer's bass um, so it doesn't really add anything so anyway enough of that so the next sound that uh, I worked on in here was this guy. Um, I called it the clean guitar. And they are actually, I can't remember. Hold on a second. I think I can, I should be able to find what, let's see. The, um, Hold on, bear with me one moment. I'm trying to get my, where are my wave files? Where's my MIDI data? MIDI data sample, probably right in front of me. You guys have probably already spotted it and I'm just like, der. Um. Okay, yeah, so it's here. Um, and then what you do is uh, you click on a MIDI clip and then you can attempt to enter it and then, uh, let's see, clean guitar. I can't remember which one it was. But anyway, I'm kind of, again, I'm kind of getting off the beaten track here. But so this sound is the, I think it's this guy. So there, this guy was kind of hard to figure out. It, there was a little bit of, there was a little bit of a challenge to do. These are the offset notes to the, um, the notes that I originally wrote. And all I did was use a delay to get the effect. If, so, and yeah, here's the delay on the uh, channel. Uh, we I can turn it off actually, and you can just hear what I wrote. So, and then if we go to here, um, hold on. So, yeah. Now they had a better sound than what I have, but um, for now, I'm just sticking with it. So you can hear, if I disable the offset MIDI data, you get that. And I got this offset MIDI data from the, the bit, uh, the MIDI bit 
uh, website. And if we turn this delay back on, and I just did a left channel too, and then a, de a delay to the right channel, and then so it just keep ping ponging. And then I additionally just added in the offset notes. So it's not really like, it's not really the same, but it is the same, but not really. So that's, anyways, um, there might be some more tweaking on that. And that's basically, it just repeats itself through the entire song. And I think I just did a little bit of a equalization automation to it, so it changed the sound a little bit. And that's pretty much that. And the next thing I I went for was uh, obviously the old that grand guitar sound, which I am brutalizing from what. From what they have what they have is much better um i called it the metal guitar so i used two different instances of flex and um, did the pig nose full gain extra and then a just the regular full gain for the other one. And I went ahead and wrote in the MIDI data separate for both instruments. And so that, you know, I, that way I could change some notes to try to make it, I can't, I, the MIDI data that brought in for that didn't really show any chords, um, but I went ahead and put a, a perfect fifth in there, which usually you can get away with without much trouble or, you know, no issues with dissonance or... Uh, why is this... How are you... Why is this behaving so oddly? Oh man, I wish FL would allow you to lock these windows so you don't accidentally click and drag them. All right, so. Yeah, so the full gain extra is just the tonic octaved twice. And then the, the the is it the full gain extra no the regular full gain i threw in the well up here it's a perfect fifth basically one two three four five yeah so that sounds good it tends it works um and the other guitar plays an octave lower so we get a range of sounds that sound pretty good and then I went ahead and automated some panning in with that. And if I, I could probably go ahead and put the, kind of put everything together here real quick. I'll put the bass too. So, and I think I worked on the, they called it the harp, I believe. Yeah, the harp, um, but I, I just called it a pad. And that guy goes, whoa. Oh, yeah, the difference you heard there is the information on that site versus what I wrote, but what I wrote actually matches with the song, so that's just what I'm going with, but I just, I just disabled this clip just because no reason to really remove it. But if you go with what they wrote, then 
then we'll go with what I wrote. Um, there might be, um, this one was pretty hard too, to hear the notes and to write them from the original recording, but I might not have them completely right, but I know that what they have doesn't match. It it matches worse than what I did. Mine actually sounds like it works. So we're going, I'm just going with it. But anyways, I just, I just have it here still just because it's there. Um, and I just slowly decrease the volume over time. And because it, you know, that's what it does. Uh, so, and then I think I started working on the drums and I actually have a dedicated plugin for drums and right here okay now flex that plug pro other plugin i was talking about from fl has strings but um there's no comparison between those strings and the ones that uh, east west um quantum leap has for you here and you they have their their vst is called play but so in their browser they just got a list of all the different instruments that you can select and so in this plugin additionally you can set different midi channels to affect those instruments independently as well as outputting them independently but since this is such a simple simpler shorter song i they the strings are just I just have them, they're not real dynamic or anything, not real lots of differences, so they're just, I have them all coming out of the same deal, but you could set them um, as you see fit. 
in this plugin. So, and uh, so it's the, let's see, I have a viola, violin, a cello, and a double bass. So I think this is, if I click this guy, hit my keyboard, and that note's too low. And my MIDI note's not even working. Oh, because it's not on the, it has to be on Omni. So, um, so turn that back to eight. Um, this guy. That's the violin or viola, and then this guy is the cello. bass which really is probably the most awesome oh well I'm not a very good pianist and in but anyway so in the song um, sounds pretty good um, so I'll add a few of these other instruments in here, try not to trigger copyright. Um, let's see, let's go for the, we'll, we'll, hit, we'll do the chorus and then I'll, I'll skip over to 41 where the electric guitar hits. And oh, that's the other one that I haven't quite worked, talked about. So this guy, this guy sounds pretty cool. And so, but I don't have a guitar plugin, so I used Flex. But the one, so, but at least the one advantage with um, a native plugin with with FL is that you can use slide notes, so that you can get kind of um, a slur between notes on the guitar, pitch bending, and you know, thus it sounds similar to what Alan Parsons was doing. And if you are someone who's used this software, the reason that I have two different MIDI channels going on here for the for the octaves is because if you don't, the slide notes will try to trigger the higher or lower notes and, and instead of staying separate. So you use the different MIDI channels to keep your notes separate and the slide effect separate. Anyway, so it sounds... <laughs> For some reason, it was quiet. Why is it so quiet? We do, let's see, where was it? Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit quiet, I think. Okay. Oh, and there's one more note at the pluck guitar. I don't know if it, I can't remember if they called it a pluck guitar. I don't think they did, but it just, it's just B and G, the B, G, E repeating itself. Da, 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 da. Um, so that, um, pretty simple what they did, but it, it's new ones in, in the, the middle of everything makes it sound cool. Um, goodness, there it is. And I put a little bit of a delay on it just because it adds fullness to the sound. Um, and there's reverb. Oh yeah, right here. Um, I don't usually use this plugin with its effects, but but 
but you can't really hear it in the song, but it does add fullness. So anyways, all right. So go back to here. Oh no, there have been, oh goodness. I almost thought it was cutting my mic out the whole time. I wouldn't have even caught that. I would have been here blabbing and no one was here. It would be able to hear me. And I'd have to redo this whole thing over again. Good job, FL. All right. So, well, let's see. So we got, we got the intro. trigger copyright sorry and then we got So anyway, that is, uh, that's my project. That's, I've gotten, that's, I mean, this is, this is where I've got, um, if you, if I look at the, um, the project, um, well, oh, goodness, project info, we're at 38 hours, 38 and a half hours on it. I don't know if this is clear enough in the recording to see, but it's 38 hours, 35 minutes. It's got 39 channels, 42, or no, excuse me, 39, 39 plugins. What? How does it have 39 plugins? I guess those are all that were used, even the ones I deleted. It's weird. Um, so anyways, it tells some information on there with about your tracks. So uh, I should try and change this just to cover. Because I didn't realize that a cover is what you would call a song that you, like, redo that somebody else did. Now I know. But anyway, so. I'm new to this whole realm of stuff, but there's actually, um, there's actually some, like, really talented, talented cover songs out there that people have done. And they're uh, on, like, older good songs. Like Flock of Seagulls, I ran so far away. Uh, I think it was it DBX or someone like that did it. Like it, they, and the the cool thing about it, um, if the license for the song gets approved, is that a lot of the you don't have the because back in the day, you had to make it in the industry as an engineer to gain access to the equipment of the day in order to produce the music nowadays anybody basically can do this on a computer and it give and it takes some other equipment you got to know music theory and have an ear for music and you know i mean there's still some basic qualifications that you need to have to be able to do it but it's cool because now talented people aren't filtered out of having the opportunity to present beautiful productions um even though they, they themselves might not have something original they're still they still have the opportunity to present something and to better themselves through the process in making uh this work so anyways if you if you lasted this long in the video i goodness i guess uh you know you like music as much as me and um for my family out there that's watching this, I hope maybe I helped explain a few things that you might have been wondering about as far as what I do when I'm making these songs and stuff. So I've learned a lot just trying to make this song and, you know, basically, uh, for the lack of a better term, plagiarizing the song. But I'm, you know, I can't, I couldn't do it in, unless I knew how to do music to begin with. But it's just nice to be able to see what other artists, how they make their music. It teaches me like what, what, what the heck, how I can possibly 
make my own song. And I, I have made a couple of my own kind of s- silly songs, but um, yeah, this is this is a learning experience, and I appreciate it. So hopefully, YouTube doesn't copyright me, and uh, I, you know, um, I guess I'm, maybe it really doesn't matter. I, I don't. I'm not making money with YouTube videos anyway, so I, I don't know, but. I just I just don't know the laws and what 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 they'll do or what can be done or whatnot. I don't want my site shut down or something. But anyways, I appreciate your guys' time and uh, have a good day.